Well, good morning. This is Pastor Jay with your Friday Devotion. And today we're going to begin a series uh, that was recommended to me. We're going to do a series on the book of Proverbs. And uh, these are sayings that are so popular because they're so down to earth. Uh, they're so poignant. You think about them and they help you to live a good life. And I'm going to be using as my source my favorite study Bible. It's called the HarperCollins Study Bible. I love this one. It gives you great notes. And you might be surprised to learn, first of all, that we don't believe this book was written by Solomon, at least not all of it. Um, it was written much later, and it's attributed to Solomon, and it's possible some of the sayings are his, but it's written from a much later time. Let's see what the uh, HarperCollins Bible has to say about it. It says, the book of Proverbs is a series of collections whose authorship was traditionally attributed to Solomon. And while many of the sayings may well have originated during the early periods, it is clear that the ascription to Solomon is an honorary one, making sense in light of his fabled wisdom that we read about in 1 Kings chapter 3 and 4. The authors of these collections of mostly two-line sayings were the sages, a social class that served as counselors, bureaucrats, and teachers during the divided kingdom. Remember, there was a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom uh, after Solomon's rule. And they served as preservers of tradition in later periods. Now, here's what it says under leading ideas. The sages rooted their theology and knowledge about God gained through a study of creation and human nature. So this was very down-to-earth stuff. This was looking at the world around you and trying to figure out some basic principles and also uh, looking at human nature, uh, which is always fascinating to do. And it talks here about one of the phrases we're going to hear almost right away, fear of the Lord. Here's what it says about that. Fear of the Lord refers to more than simple fear. It is the awe, obedience, and proper relationship to God that necessarily undergirds, undergirds all attempts at gathering knowledge and living wisely. Contrasts between the righteous and the wise and the wicked or foolish show the sages' concern for Israelites' morality as it is lived out on a day-to-day -day basis. That's why these are so popular. They're so down-to-earth it's about how you live every day. Concern with retribution also marks the thinking of this group, for they believe that certain actions invariably produce reliable consequences. The wise person will consider these causes and effects before acting. The belief is an inevitable relationship between act and consequence, makes it easy to blame fools for their foolishness and related misfortunes. And most of the time that makes sense, doesn't it? You do something foolish, you pay the price. Uh, you do something wise, you get rewarded. The problem is it doesn't always work that way in life. You may be surprised to learn that the book of Job was written in reaction to this way of thinking. To say, here's a righteous man who suffers. Why does that happen? It's that question we can never understand. Why do bad things happen to good people? But we know that in general, good things do happen when you try to act wisely. So let's look at one of the first things we find in this book. Remember we talked about this. What's the purpose of the book? Here's what it says in the prologue, for learning about wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for gaining instruction in wise dealing, righteousness, justice, and equity, to teach shrewd, shrewdness rather to the simple, knowledge and prudence to the young. Let the wise also hear and gain in learning and the discerning acquire skill to understand a proverb and a figure, the words of the wise and their riddles. And then it says what we just talked about. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. And I'm going to go on with uh, verse 8. This is called violent men. Hear, my children, your father's instruction. Do not reject your mother's teaching, for they are a fair garland for your head and penance for your neck. My child, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie in wait for blood, let us wantonly ambush the innocent. Like Sheol, let us swallow them alive. Sheol was the place of shadows. It was the place of death in the Old Testament. And whole, like those who go down to the pit, we shall find all kinds of costly things. We shall fill our homes with their goods. Throw in your lot with us. This is what they're still saying. And we will have all one purse. Now here's what the Father says about this. My child, do not walk in their way. Keep your foot from their paths. And this I have underlined in my Bible. For their feet run to evil 
and they hurry to shed blood. For in vain is the net baited while the bird is looking on. Yet they lie in wait to kill themselves, exclamation point, and set an ambush for their own lives. Isn't that the case? Isn't that the case in life that a lot of times when you're doing something you know is wrong, you will pay that price. You're, you're, you're trying to hurt another, you're going to hurt yourself. And that's something good for us to think about. And let's, let's conclude this time together with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you give us wise words from these sages. We ask, Lord, that they would guide us in living our lives so that we could give glory to you and also, Lord, find that way that is both pleasing to us and to you. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I hope you have a good Friday and a great weekend.